As the prophet of esports, I rely on trustworthy and meaningful data every day. Data from our research partner, YouGov, offers the most complete view of esports fans and gamers in the world, providing context to who they are, what they think, the brands they buy, and things they do. YouGov's connected insights and research services inform strategy at every level. If you're a team, a brand, agency, or rights holder, you should be talking with YouGov. Their partners measure and maximize ROI and are telling compelling stories with data. Visit yougov.com slash gaming dash esports to learn more. Freddie asks, did I miss ESL sale chat? Freddie, you did not. We're about to get to it right now. So that's the perfect segue, guys. I, sorry. I wanted to talk about all the fallout around Activision Blizzard, Microsoft's uh, transaction uh, from last week because it was such a hot topic last week. But um, this was the big story this week, guys. So let's get to this because I think everyone's sort of waiting to, to discuss this one. And the headline here, uh, so everyone knows, it says, Savvy Gaming acquires ESL Gaming from MTG at $1 billion, uh, 1 billion US dollars to merge with Faceit. So Savvy Gaming, backed by the Saudi Arabian government's public investment fund, they've acquired two of the biggest names in the world of esports, um, that's ESL and Faceit, for a combined sum of $1.5 billion. I think ESL is being bought for $1.05 billion, and the, the balance going to face it. And the idea is to create a global leader in competitive gaming called the ESL Face It Group. ESL is a tournament provider. They do like CSGO and Dota. And Face It also is a tournament provider um, for games like CSGO, League, and Rainbow Six. So the idea is to put these groups together. The Saudis have spent $1.5 billion on this. The transaction's expected to close in Q2. Huge deal, um, not as big as last week, Jeff, but still a huge deal. <laughs> and I'm curious, um, you know, we don't have all the numbers, right? We don't know the revenue at ESL and face it. I did see some numbers from like a year or two ago, although I don't know how accurate they are. Um, but I'm curious what you guys think of the deal, think of the price paid, think of the synergies. Like what what is the what is the feeling in terms of is this a smart buy from the Saudis? Is that should the Saudi, you know, public investment fund be doing these kinds of deals in the first place? And you know, what do we think this combined entity can achieve? Because it so, is an interesting sort of combination. Jeff, I don't know if you have. Uh, I don't necessarily need to go first, but I'll just jump because we do, we do um, the ESL numbers. I think we do have because it's getting spun out of a public company, Modern Times Group. So. I looked them up, um, and also thanks to uh, Chris at Coins because he he initially pointed this out to me. Uh, they did 150 million in trailing 12 month revenue, so it's about seven times trailing 12 month uh, revenue for just the uh, ESL piece, if I'm correct on those numbers. And they they have negative EBITDA, so that that's pretty pretty rich. Uh, I think, in my opinion, I imagine the face it multiple was probably even even more, even higher. So what I'll just that, that, I just wanted number? to give that context. 150 million for the for the last 12 months. It's funny because the, the only number I found was 129, 121 million Poland zloty zloty in revenue in 2019, which was like 30 million US dollars in 2019. So if that I don't know if that 2021 number is correct, but that's huge growth from 2019. So it is possible that I did the conversion wrong from Zloty to dollars, which would make that even worse, obviously. Um, they, their, their investor deck wasn't Zloty, but I thought it was 100 million Zloty, but it is entirely possible. So 150 that it was, million Zloty yeah. would make more sense in terms of growth. That's 36 million US dollars, right? Yeah. In 2021. Be, that makes this even more egregious. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, egregious. I'm pretty, egregious. <laughs> I mean, if like, you're doing 36 million in revenue, you're getting bought for a billion five. Like that's to me, that's doesn't compute. Well, you're being bought for a billion, right? Because it's just the ESL piece. That's Sorry, 27 times. Oh, five. 27 times you're trailing 12 month revenue. I mean, I, I wouldn't call that egregious. <laughs> it's pretty egregious for a tournament platform that I don't really think. You know, it's not a SaaS business or something like that where they're, you know, they're getting recurring revenue. And I mean, 
you know, there are very few companies out there that traded 27 times revenue on the public market. Like this isn't some small startup. It's a pretty scaled organization. Like to get 27 times trailing revenue to me, I think, you know, that that's not a prudent, you know, investment. Can I make some just a case here? And I'm curious, Jimmy and Lindsay, if you guys buy it or Jeff, if you buy it, which is, you know, arguably ESL and Face It are two of the biggest tournament players in a market where I think even I've said that tournament providers are becoming more and more common, right? Like there's sort of a dime a dozen at this point. And it, I get the feeling that as a consequence of this explosion in tournament providers, you're getting uh margin erosion right like because if, if i want to put on a tournament i can go call esl and they'll do it for x or i can go call you know uh etl and they'll do it for x minus a dollar right and mm -hmm. and and because there's so many of them you get this sort of margin erosion by putting the two two of the biggest together esl and face it do you have enough sort of scale and weight in the market that you're not the only player in town, but you start to become big enough that, that, that you can combat this sort of margin erosion, right? That it's not just 20 small players. Now there's one really big player and sort of three or four, 20 small players that don't really matter anymore. Like does, does the size here matter enough to justify paying this kind of premium because you're going to get better margins over time and more growth over time? And I'm curious, uh, sorry to the long-winded question, but is it more of a winner-take-all market in your mind, or at least winner-take-most is the shorter way of asking this question? Lindsay, I don't know if you have thoughts. Oh, I wanted to see, I wanted to see um, if Jimmy had anything to say. I do think it's a winner-take-all market, but I don't know that I don't know that that can be done inorganically at this point. I just don't know. I mean, we've seen so many changes over the past two years, right? And we haven't seen a tournament provider kind of step up and dominate this space in a way that suggests a, a billion dollar buyout. And I, I'm, I guess, suppose more bullish on two of the larger ones combining. Cause Paul, I think you're right. I definitely think that it obviously reduces competition in the space if two of the largest people come together, but I don't know that there's been any provider that has come forward that has also been differentiated enough from any other provider to have any of them win based on anything other than cost. So I suppose if they could get the cost low enough, then they'll probably win. But I don't know, there could be something that organically pops up that just works a lot better for gamers to organize tournaments. I'm just not sure. Now, I'm just here's not, a question I'm, I, I'm not sold by this price tag and, mm. and the story mm. behind it. Maybe it's because I'm not like innately familiar with these businesses. Are these like B to C businesses, or are they running like ES runs leagues, right? So they are like operating leagues. They're not like just a tournament oh. platform that you would go on if like the four of us wanted to like host a business no, of esports. They, they, they run the big CS:GO leagues right. and things like that, right? right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, what is this to be fair, M MTG being a public company has a billion dollar market cap, right? So you know, and, and MTG owns, I think the number I saw was 90, 91% of ESL gaming. So like it, the, the billion dollar price tag, at least the public shareholders sort of seem to agree with the, the price. Um, I thought it was interesting also that MTG said they would, ret would return 40% of the proceeds to shareholders and they're going to use the rest to strengthen uh, their buy and build strategy is what they called it. So uh, I don't know what else they've been building or buying other than ESL they, and DreamHack, which they put together. They have like but, a whole mobile publishing business. They bought a company called Congregate. I think they have like a sort of mobile publishing type thing. So, you know, clearly paying a premium here, but not like, because so, you would, I, I would argue probably ESL and DreamHack together, that ESL entity is the biggest asset within MTG. If MTG is trading at a billion dollar valuation, you know, I, I definitely could make the case. This was seems pretty reasonable, right? Um, I don't have any seem, numbers. It doesn't seem like un, unreasonable. I just don't know if it'll, I mean, obviously with every single merger that you do or every bet that you take, I don't know if it'll pan out. I don't know that I'm sold on the well, revenue model here. 